All right, so uh, my name is Daniel. I run the IoT Top 10 project. And uh, basically, we're going to do a feedback session. Um, I was going to do 10 minutes for slides, but now I have like a minute and a half for slides. So that's fine. Um, so um, IoT Security Project is basically an umbrella of different projects. Um, there's lots of different ones. The IoT Top 10 is the one I'm specifically talking about today. Um, but there are other projects like General IoT Vulns. Not sure why it's flashing. Um, might be my side. Um, IoT recommendations. Uh, there's a separate project just for IoT related to SCADA and ICS. Um, and there are also projects like um, a reference architecture project where you actually design what it should look like because the problem with these types of projects is you show um, people what you shouldn't do and they say, fine, what should I do? Right, so that would be a really nice project to have. Um, the purpose for the IoT Top 10 is basically the 10 worst things that you should avoid, right? So it's not, um, it's not specifically vulns or threats or risks because you know you could talk for hours about uh, what the differences are between those. So the idea is here is just these are bad things. Don't do these things. Um, so this is the team and, and briefly around the methodology of what we did. Um, we basically took uh, a whole bunch of real world vulnerabilities from tons of different databases um, and collected them all together. And, and the whole purpose of doing that is basically to say what's actually being exploited in the wild, right? What do we actually care about? Um, so we went to NVD, we went to the bug crowd database, we went to uh, lots of internal vulns from team members and uh, friends of team members who brought it all together. Um, to basically collect that into a data set that we can analyze to make sure we're not forgetting something major. And we basically weighted those based on how often we saw them. Then we went and looked at basically every single IoT project that's been um, talked about or, or put out there in like the last several years. Uh, so CSA, ANISA, Stanford, NIST, a bunch of different projects. So this is what it looks like right now. Um, Hopefully you can see that there's uh, better visibility in a later slide, but um, this is currently what it looks like. It's a little bit risk ranked with color, um, just for the visual for later on. Uh, but it's weak passwords, um, basically as number one. Insecure network services, number two. Insecure access interfaces, this is a combination of all the different ways you would get to an IoT system, right? So it's, um, it's basically merging together multiple things. Um, insecure outdated components, this is probably a nightmare for everyone. Um, lack of secure update mechanism, um, this one is pretty bad, you know, sending the update in clear text, not signing the update, um, having the update server be writable for the entire company's software, things like that. Um, privacy protection, this one goes without saying. Insecure data transfer and storage, this is basically any time out of the IoT ecosystem you are sending or storing data in an insecure way. Um, physical hardening, if, if you can touch the system, you can usually exploit it. This is the one that I like the least right now, and this is all draft. This is an all active conversation, right? We got like a whole nother month or however long we need to finalize this. Um, I would actually put this one in here uh, in 2014, but I don't think I like it all that much anymore because it's kind of confusing between what I meant it to mean was the manufacturer didn't give you sufficient options to secure the system. They didn't give you uh, ways to upgrade the encryption, the, the protocols that are used, um, different types of options for securing it. And they didn't provide those to you, so it's a less secure system. But when you read it, it kind of looks like they failed, you failed to actually configure it correctly. So I think it, because it's not clear, maybe we could change that. And then device management, this is where people are deploying like thousands or hundreds of thousands of systems out there. And they're not really, they don't know where they are, they don't know the patch state, uh, and you've got sort of issues there. So this is kind of the diff. Um, in 2014, when we first launched this, uh, the web interface was number one. Um, and then it was uh, authentication authorization. 
And th these are kind of like categories. If you look at the left, they're kind of like categories. And then number three was network services. Um, and then all the individual cloud mobile, and we didn't have API in here, but cloud and mobile are broken out separately, right? Um, and then software and firmware, and then physical. And so in the new one, we've basically modified that and here are the main modifications. We move passwords to the top. Um, network services to number two. Think of passwords as like, I don't know, the way I think of that is, think of all the botnets, right? Um, network services being number two. Think of what you could find on Shodan for any particular vulnerable device. Um, combined access me methods. So basically API, cloud, mobile, all those are combined into uh, that one issue. Um, added the storage issue to transport, called out insecure components specifically. This is also where like supply chain will, will fall under, right? You're using insecure components. You don't know where you're getting your stuff. You're just assembling the widget of widgets and then shipping it out. Um, and then device management was added. Um, so that was that. So now let's just go into straight feedback from the room. And I'm gonna actively, I'm gonna take notes uh, this is what we do in our meetings, and you are all part of the project now. So um, we can basically just uh, take feedback. Um, and hopefully you can see the list uh, either on the right or on the left, and just super raw thoughts on, uh, and we can go in order if you want. So let's just do that. So who, who doesn't think or doesn't like the password, and this is a combination of weak, guessable, and hard-coded being number one. Okay? Yeah, yeah, sure. So this is just off the top of my head. Um, we're going through a similar exercise at my uh, day job. And I would put, we're putting for, in general, not just for IoT, but, um, you know, really uh, update ability, lack of secure update or any update ability is number one because without the ability to do that, you can't, if we have that, we can do most of the rest over time, but without the ability to update, um, we can't get to the rest of the stuff because we'll never design a perfect anything from day one. So I would just, I'm not saying that number one can't be number one, but I would think I would take um, inability to update and maybe bump it up higher than the list. Yeah, this, th that's perfect. I think the key here is, um, so one, one thing to think about here is we combined manufacturer, enterprise concerns, developer concerns, and consumer concerns. This is basically a meta list of like, when you think of IoT going bad, what is the number one problem? And I, I would say, and I would, I would say symptom. What is the number one thing that's actually hurting people? Not like a root cause, because if we go back to root causes, we're gonna end up at like one or two. It's going to be like, it's going to be a list of one that's going to say management not focused on security, right? Um, profit before uh, security. And the list will be done. Um, I agree with what you're saying because that is like a, an additional root cause. Like, I, I agree. If you can't do that, you can't do a lot of other things. But this is really a list of like acute pain. This is like what what's causing harm. Um, it, and some of the feedback has been like swapping one and two uh, because, you know, in order for one to happen, there's got to be a service open, usually uh, facing the internet for it to get exploited. Um, but so, so it's a weird mix. It's a weird combination between uh, ease, ease of attack, you know, probability combined with the impact, uh, combined with the pervasiveness of the issue. Um, but th that's good feedback. I I'm going to take that back. Thoughts? Throw them out? Come on. Yeah? Yeah, and when you mention a mobile app, do you mean a mobile app controlling an IoT device, or are you talking about just a mobile app inside your enterprise? Uh, like, at all? I, I mean, we have fingertip scanners, we have um, scanners built into platforms. 
Okay. Um, and what would be the main sort of thing to avoid, the number one thing to avoid in that context for a list like this? Like, like, where would your attacker be? Would it be inside the network, or would it, is this an internet-facing thing? Okay. Uh, the way that I would think about that is, if it's internet-facing, then how do you auth into it, right? And that's why, if the if auth was bad, um, then that's how they would get control of this this thing from the internet. But um, I'll, I'll take that down. So. Just basically ICS, um, different perspective. And feel free to hit me up afterwards as well if you wanna get into the Slack channel and talk about it. Um, all right, this one's crazy. Uh, what do you think about combining access methods? Because if you don't, you actually take up three slots with mobile, cloud, API. I mean, you could even break it down further. The idea was to not take three slots and just say, don't just think about the device, but also think about how you're getting to it. And all those different individual methods can have their own vulnerabilities. So generally, do we like the combination? Uh, do you think it should be broken out? Yeah, physical would be another access method. That's, fun. That's funny, I hadn't thought of that. Um, I guess, I guess the combination, uh, it's amazing, it keeps doing that. Uh, number three are all remote. I guess that's the key, right? Um, well, that's a good point. Um, oh, that, that's a good idea, yeah, yeah. So what, what is it now, insecure? <coughs> Yeah, take that to four words, insecure remote. I think that is a good idea. Okay, and then, um, yeah, insecure outdated components. One discussion that we were having, and by the way, this discussion is on the OWASP um, Slack channel, and it's IoT-security, and it's open. The, the project team has always been open, so you just show up. You're like, hey, this should move up to this, or you forgot this, or whatever, and we, uh, we try to incorporate that. So this one here, um, the one thing we were thinking about is actually explicitly somehow saying supply chain, um, because you know insecure components. It, I just feel like it's not quite high enough to call out directly yet. Although last couple of weeks has a might, might have changed that priority some, uh, but um, but we, we are going to mention it in the in the text itself. Um, the problem right now, you probably saw that report that just came out that basically like 60% of like uh, routers are just full of garbage from like six years ago, like old custom web servers. Um, people are just assembling with broken Legos to build these things. Um, so I, I think that's pretty strong. Uh, secure update mechanism, um, obviously you like that being high. You, you, you could even take it higher, right? Okay, sure. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've got it. Third party software or hardware components. I think because that exact point came up. It, it's in the um, it's in the extra text. Yeah. Um, yep. Sure. When we talk about the weak credentials, um, are we proposing that it's strictly being weak that's a problem, or is it the fact that it's a password by itself that's a problem, right? Because we know that passwords in general are kind of like 80% of all applications. So sometimes yep. Yeah, no, it's a good question. I, I would say that we, we wouldn't want to say, in number one, everyone needs uh, two factor for all IoT, because it's just too early, I, I think. Nobody, I mean, we're trying to get, we're trying to turn off HTTP at this point. Um, I don't think we could jump to strong auth. 
I do agree later on in our maturity, we should absolutely get away from passwords. But right now, I think they should just not be horrible and also not be in a document. Yeah, admin, admin. You just Google the device and you get the, the, uh, you know, the user manual and it tells you exactly the credentials. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's asking about mutual auth. Yeah, I, I think, again, just for, the, just for now, because we're so far behind in IoT security, just having a good auth into the system would be good. But down the line, I mean, all these things, 5G coming out, they're all going to have to be mutual TLS and mutual cert auth and that sort of thing. So I, I agree that that just probably will come later. Hopefully, maybe 2020, maybe 2022. Um, uh, privacy, privacy, um, this seems kind of obvious. It, one, one issue I have with this one, and I'll see what you guys think, is that um, not storing or sending privacy information in a bad way is kind of similar to this one, isn't it? Yeah. So I feel like there's an opportunity maybe to merge those somehow. Um, physical hardening, I originally didn't want this one on there because the attack method for most people hurting IoT devices is not to walk up to it. So I, I feel like it's a vuln, but it, maybe it shouldn't be in the top 10. I don't know. You agree with that? Yes. Yeah, and, and if you have physical access, what else can you do? Yeah, yeah. go, go to the, uh, the whiteboard and get, get the password. Um, so uh, insufficient security configurability. This one I, I'm starting to not like. Um, so it's, it's basically the vendor did not provide enough security features. Go ahead. Mm. When you shift to this target, if, you, if you're enough, depending on the device model, of course, but with a lot of IoT devices, we don't expect users to do a lot of configuration. Hey, thanks for the offer. Yeah, yeah appreciate it. Um, no, I, I just wrote that down. That's good. It, it's, almost, it's almost worth its own. Um, and this would be focused at the manufacturer, not shipping device secure by default. Um, that, that's a good idea. And then device management, how do you feel about this? This, I feel like this is a little bit farther out in terms of um, maturity of the industry. This is basically saying, look, if you're a vendor and you have half a million devices out there, do you have asset management? Do you know the current patch levels? If something really bad happened, how quickly could you update them? So this is another one that's very manufacturer focused. Um, do you feel like it should be in the top 10 right now or do you feel like it should maybe be a 2020 item? Twenty twenty. I think fortunately it should be there, especially connected to if your update mechanism is almost as if you're the outside. Yeah, it is. It is very similar to that. Th those are very similar. Um, okay, anything you are thinking of when you think of IoT security, and it's not on the list. Yep. Root of trust. Root of trust. Okay, and this is, so describe like a, a scenario or a, a pain point around this. The pain point is when any, everything, anything and everything that runs is pretty much at, at root. There is no separation. Oh, okay, so, hmm. So if you were to, to establish number one, you compromise the whole thing and you can add the things that you want. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, least privilege. Yeah, this it's good. Um, and where would where would you say that would be ranked? Fairly high, top five maybe. Yeah, I think so. Potentially, yeah. 
Okay. Um, any other things that just don't seem to be here that you think should be here? Okay, and okay, and, and what does that look like? What is the pain point that you're thinking? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like. Yep. And there are things like, you know, dice that are um, haven't been done in a little while, but looking at from a hardware and then developing. Yep. That makes sense. Um, so this is the diff. 